been answering a few questions recently on Facebook about how to do antiquing. So I just thought I'd share a quick little video. Uh, this is a project I'm working on. It's a belt for my son's girlfriend. Um, I've already done the dye work. That would be your first step. You'd want to do any dye work that you want to do. So it's got black on the edges and black in the uh, on the background there. Not much, not much dyeing on this one other than the border. So I'll do my best to videotape this as I go along. But um. So the first thing you want to do after you have all your tooling done and all your dye work done, you got to you gotta make sure that you leave enough time for that dye to dry completely. And I think if anybody, if, if people make one overall overarching mistake, it's they don't let stuff dry between coats. They try to rush the process. So I'll try and give you a kind of a timeline as I'm going here too. So uh, there's a number of different products out there you can use. What I use, I use all the Feebigs products. Uh, the first product I'll use is this Pro Resist. And you don't want to be chintzy on this stuff. Go ahead and make sure that you're putting a, a, a good amount on here. You want to make sure that it's got really good heavy coats you can do one or two coats but you want to go quite heavy you don't want to chintz out on this stuff it'll it'll make or break your project whatever you do make sure you don't miss any spots because that's uh, if you're missing a spot then the dye the dyes that are in the antique paste are going to remain on that spot if you miss a spot it, you, can't, you won't be able to wipe it off on this belt we're going with a black uh, um, antique finish she wants the black belt to be all black and tan leather colored so after I'm done with each process, I'll lift it up and show the camera because I'm, I'm not sure if this is, if, if you're going to be able to see this if I don't. So yeah, you want to make sure that you're working this stuff down into all the crevices and cracks and you almost want it to almost want it to like pool up in certain areas. That'll be that that will make sure that will ensure that you are getting good coverage on everything. So I'll bring it down here. If you can see, I've got a fair amount of liquid on that, on the belt. Like I say, it's almost pooling up in certain areas. So don't be afraid to put this stuff on heavy because this is, this is the only protection that the leather has against the uh, antique paste. So I'm going to cut you off here and when this is done drying, I'll cut you back on and I'll let you know how much time has elapsed. Okay. Well, it's been about 40 minutes that this stuff has been drying, that this uh, resist has been drying and now it is nice and dry. You can't see anything on there. It doesn't look like there's a, 
like there's anything on there. So now we're gonna take our antique finish, which is which is a paste. Now uh, this is important. You see what that looks like? Almost looks like shoe polish or like a thin shoe polish. Okay. That's the only thing I use. I have tried the antique gels and I don't care if it's Feebigs or or uh, EcoFlow or anything. The only one I will use is this Feebigs paste. All you do is I like to mix it up a little, make sure that it's nice and it gets a little a little dry on top sometimes. So just make sure that you mix it up good and get a good amount on your dauber. Don't don't be chintzy. Again, this is this is not where you want to go go light. Now after you've done all this work on this belt or your project, and then you go to smear this stuff on, you're thinking, oh man, I ruined it. I just ruined it. It's it's horrible. Well, it's not. So you gotta put a good amount of this on there. People try to put a lighter coat on or make it go a little thinner because they don't wanna use all the product or it's expensive or they're trying to save money. Don't worry about it, put it on. If you want your project to come out right, put it on heavy. I just, I get to where I can just barely see my project underneath. Or the stamping and carving and stuff. So. But yeah, this is, I don't know if you can see yet. I'll show you in a minute here. When I get done, I'll bring it up closer to the camera. But I don't know if you can see it's, it's going on heavy. It's going on thick. Again, you want to make sure that you're looking at every little spot on your belt or on your project to make sure you don't miss anything. There's no thin spots. There's no... No nothing that's getting missed. Okay. And that does it. Oh yeah, wear gloves. <laughs> Your fingers will get dirty. And now this, here I'm gonna bring it up close to the camera so you can see. You can see it's on there thick, it's heavy. Oh, see, I'm see right there? I missed a little spot. So we're just gonna kind of make sure it gets filled in there. But yeah, this is, don't go light. Don't go cheap on this. You want this to be a good and heavy coat so you don't, you don't miss anything. Okay. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of extra here. Nice thing about wearing gloves. And just clean it up. Now I'm gonna let that sit for about five to 10 minutes. You don't want it to get dry, but you don't you you don't want to wipe it immediately. So give that about we'll give that about five to ten minutes. I'll cut you back on. Okay, it's been about seven minutes or so. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down. I'm just gonna use some paper towel, and after. I wipe it down and get rid of most of this antique finish. Then I'm going to let that, what's left on there, completely dry. Again, it's going to take a little time, but I think you'll get a pretty good idea for how this works. Yeah. I almost let this sit on here a little too long. It got a little hair, just a hair too dry. So doesn't need a long time, maybe five minutes I should have gone. So I'm just gonna have to work it a little extra to get 
to get more of it off, which is fine. It's better to have too much than too little. And There we go. There we go. Now you're starting to see a color come through, the original leather color there. That's looking good. Yeah, there we go. Just put a little elbow grease in it. If you uh, wipe it a little wetter than what I did, you don't have to work quite as hard as I'm working right now. But it's all the same effect. Just want to get that tip nice and clean. There we go. Yep. All right, it's looking good, looking good. I'm happy with this. And you can grab yourself something. I'm just gonna use the tip of a paintbrush or the back of a paintbrush. You wanna clean out your holes here so that you don't have that dye sitting in these holes or the paste, the antique paste sitting in these holes. So go ahead and clean up anything you can't get to. You can see that's just, that just pokes it out. Use it anything, use a pencil, use whatever. There you go. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here. I got a concho in the middle. So I'm gonna clean out this hole in the middle here. And then we got our holes for the belt tip. Again, this is, this is not a final step, so you'll still be getting those holes cleaned out a little bit better later on. But this is just to get the majority of it out because the next step now is you want to just let this antique paste dry completely that's kind of the theme behind antiquing is always let it dry completely in between each step don't be in too much of a hurry don't try to rush the process don't put heat on it that'll that can cause damage to the belt or to the project heat is a is the is a bad bad thing when it comes to leather you don't want to Heat it up. You want to just let let it air dry. And you know, I'm I'm in my basement. This is where my workshop is. Um, we keep it pretty warm in the house, so about 70 degrees, 68 degrees, somewhere in there, and really low humidity because I live in Montana. So, so uh, you know, the heat and the humidity humidity is all going to affect the dry times of your project but go ahead and do that now again make sure you let it completely dry in between each each step each process let me throw these away and then I'll bring this close up for you to see so you see how that antique paste has worked its way down into all the cracks and crevices You'll see them here, especially on the floral tooling. They got, they got right down into all these little cuts and the stamp impressions. Got a feather here. It, it has the black dye or black uh, uh, antique paste down into each little feather groove there. Okay. See the matting, background matting that I did? You can see it's down into each of that. So, now again, we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. I'm 
I'll give you one more quick little shot of this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. If you don't have a workstation, um, I suggest you do. Um, I I just get this brown paper. Typically, I save the when when I buy uh, leather at Tandy, they put some brown paper between the rolls and roll it up between the leather sheets and roll it up. I just save that. It's like a heavy heavy paper. And then I tape it down to the surface, work surface. That way I can just replace that. I don't have to worry about getting glue on it or dye or whatever. So and this is my workstation. I'll show you there. That's all my Angelus, Angelus paints. And then these paints are actually really cool. Um, you get these at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever. And they're just an acrylic paint. Um, I'll actually be using some of the Angelus on this. Um, the letter and the feathers are going to be white and teal. Uh, then I'm going to be stitching this entire belt with a teal thread. So should look pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, if you don't have a workstation, uh, I suggest you make one for yourself. Even if you search Craigslist or, or uh, Facebook Marketplace or something, find an old little desk that it really doesn't it's not worth much i mean you can pick them up for 10 15 dollars and uh, just make a separate station for doing your paint and dye and glue work that way you don't mess up your regular desk so anyway just a quick little tip so um i'm gonna let this completely dry and i will get back to you and i will let you know how long it's been All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. Maybe 35 minutes. And when I wipe over this with my hand, I'm not getting any black coming up on it. So that's how you know it's dry, okay? So the next thing that I do is I use a brush and this is just a, it's a shoe brush. Uh, you can get them at Walmart for this is uh, a kiwi brush and what I do is I just give this a good vigorous brushing and what this will do is it just knocks off any last little bit of loose pieces that you might have of the of the dye that might just little little crusty pieces okay little dried pieces you don't you don't want this you want to keep it dry and clean you know what I'm saying so now we come to our final step and that is to put a top coat on it now with the top coat You can use a number of different products. Again, I like the Feebing's products. And this one is tan coat. This is what I use. So I just take a, a wool dauber, put some on here. And again, now with this, you want to leave it pretty wet. But you don't really want to wipe it on. You want to more dab it on than wiping it. Okay. You want to just make sure you get good coverage. That's the big thing. And again, if you wipe it, you'll have a tendency to wipe off or wipe some of the um, some of the antique out of the cracks. So if you are wiping it like this, it's fine, but zero pressure, no pressure on this. Don't, don't give it any downward force. And when I get to here, these areas where I'm, I've done the carving, I really try to just dab it on 
not wipe hardly at all. This is, you can also roll it on and that way you're not wiping it, but you're rolling it. And that seems to be getting pretty good results. So maybe I'll just keep on with that process. But again, get a good heavy coat on here. Now, see, now I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of black dye transfer onto that dauber, which is normal. But I just I don't want it, so I'm just going to uh, switch out and grab a new dauber. Um, problem is, you don't want to have that. Don't want to be transferring dye around. You want to try to keep it as clean as possible. That's why I brush it, because it knocks off some of the little loose dust particles of, of dye. But again, it's starting to get dirty already, so might have hit a spot that was a little bit more uh, dusty that I didn't get the, the uh, antique paste out of completely, or Maybe it wasn't quite dry. That's why I'm getting a little bit more transfer of this stuff. Or a little bit more uh, of it coming off. So I'm just going to keep grabbing new daubers. Daubers are cheap. Yeah, and put this on and roll it. Wipe it. Daub it. Don't wipe it. I shouldn't say that. Don't wipe it. Want to daub it, spread it, whatever, but don't don't wipe it on. Now, one time that that might be a little different, and I'll show you. I'll use an example here. If, uh, if at any point you got a little, I don't know, if the leather, if the natural leather part got a little too dark, you might want to wipe it on and see how that'll actually take quite a bit more of the dye out. And you're just, you're actually kind of using it like a cleaner at the same time. You're cleaning some of the, some of the dye off of the leather. I kind of like that. I think I'm going to do that on the rest of this belt. It was, it was a little dark on the basket stamp. So, again, you know, buy these big bags of daubers and, and use them up. Don't, don't try to be chintzy. Don't try to conserve your daubers. It's a dauber. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I, it's cleaning up the basket weave just a little more. Bring you a little more definition. If you use a dry dauber, that might actually clean up some more of the dye. See how that's coming up? Which is okay here, I like that. But when you're using it dry, you're taking the, the tan coat off. So you wanna make sure that you go back And apply a little more ten coat to those areas if you, you do use a dry one. Okay, yeah, I like that. It's coming just a little bit cleaner. Should we try a little bit more on the... Let's wipe just a little bit. Yeah. I'm not liking it so much on the floral. I think we're fine on the floral the way it is. But I do like how it's cleaning up on the... Uh, on the basket stamp stuff. That's kind of... Yeah, it makes that M pop a little more too. So one more dauber here. I'm going to use just a little more.
There we go. Now just kind of lean back, look at it overall, see how you like the color, make sure that it's consistent color the whole way. I think we're going to try and take just a hair more off here, get a little more consistency. There we go, that's better. I like the center section. Let's go ahead and just clean this up a little more here. Again, this dauber has tan coat on it, so it's still applying tan coat. I'm not wiping the tan coat off. Got a little something, something stuck here. There we go. So, yeah, I like that. One more dauber. I'm gonna go just a just a hair more on the tip. It looks like it's I'm actually gonna roll this because it looks like it's a little bit thin on the super on the on the tan coat. So okay. Now I'm not getting the edges. I suppose you could if you wanted to, especially if you're not lining this belt. You could definitely do the edges. Um, I have not finished my edges yet. I haven't. Um, I haven't done any uh, burnishing work on the on the edges yet. So. Uh, so there's no point in me doing the tan coat on that. Okay, let me bring you down here and show you. Show you this. You can see it's pretty shiny. Nice even coat all the way across. Now this, we're gonna let dry It'll probably be, I'm probably gonna do a couple hours at least on the dry time on this. So I just want it to be super, super dry by the time, before I do my next step. So, you know, I'm not even sure that I'll finish this today. I might just let it sit overnight and, uh, and uh, then move on tomorrow. So the next step tomorrow is I'm going to be painting the feathers with a white, uh, Angelus paint and then blue teal blue accents so I want to make sure you have that have this stuff good and dry before you do any painting so all right 